Hello and welcome to the Bull and Bear Invest channel. Today is the 19th of March 2021 and this is our weekly watch list review. This week we see our weekly watch list review focusing only on the mining industry. Looking into Eurasia Mining, Codal Minerals, Premier African Minerals, Rambler Metals and Mining and Thor Mining. Firstly, let's take a look into Eurasia Mining's West Kitlim update. The technical project is based on the concurrent production at the Malaya Sovnovka, Klyoshiki and Bolshaya Sovnovka sites. The definitive feasibility study allows for mining at several open pits concurrently. Operational data has now demonstrated the exploration data to be understated in both terms of grade and dimensions of ore bodies. The total difference is calculated against three years of operational data stands at 43%. The environmentally friendly nature of Eurasia mining's process, and indeed the PGMs themselves, have already rec been recognised by the inclusion of Eurasia into the relevant ESG indexes and portfolios as announced via the RNS on the 17th of February 2021. What to expect from Eurasia mining in the near future? Well, Eurasia is in the advanced stages of the approvals process regarding the licence surrounding the West Kitlin licence, referred to as the West Kitlin Flanks, and a final award of the licence is expected soon. The outline of the area was revised in the east of the licence and resubmitted in August 2020. The second application has received all the approvals and awaits the sign-off by the Federal Ministry of Natural Resources. The company will pursue this approval so that the further resources in the area may be developed. Bolshaya Sovnovska, in the West Kitlim licence, is being prepared for mining and an update is expected soon to confirm progress. And as always, we are eagerly awaiting an update regarding the formal sale process, but this is expected soon now that flights between the UK and Russia have commenced as of the 16th of March. Moving on to Codal Minerals PLC. Codal has now built a portfolio of eight gold projects in West Africa. Niel, Tiabizu, Mbahiakro, Dabakala and Kohorogo in Cote d'Ivoire and Fatal, Nangalasso, and Slam in Mali. Codal's exploration priorities are definition drilling in the Fatal project in Mali, exploration drilling in the Niel project in Cote d'Ivoire, and infill geochemical sampling for the defined zones of reconnaissance drilling in Dabakala project in Cote d'Ivoire. The funding proposal to fund the development of the company's gold assets is up to 2.5 million US dollars including the 0.3 million US dollars already advanced with the additional funds to be drawn down in two equal tranches of 1.1 million dollars. Codal geologists are undertaking a field visit to the Niel project located in northern Côte d'Ivoire to confirm historic drilling, geological setting and confirm planning for the new drilling campaign. Application will be made for the 168,489,949 new ordinary shares being issued to be admitted to the trading on the alternative investment market. It is expected that the admission will take place on or around the 22nd of March 2021. A mining license application is also awaiting approval from the Malu transition government of Codal's flagship asset, the Bugoni Lithium Project. Whilst awaiting approval, the company has undertaken a significant amount of field exploration. Let's take a look at the recent developments within Premier African Minerals. George Roach, the Chief Executive of Premier African Minerals, released a statement on the 18th of March 2021, stating that Premier's present market value suggests that the retention of 100% of Zulu may potentially be a better option, and that the divestment of the Zimbabwe assets may no longer be appropriate. Premier and MN Holdings Limited continues to develop mutual interest in operating the Ochazondo manganese mine in Namibia. The definitive feasibility study timeline is estimated at 14 months and this is unlikely to change. It's also worth noting that the price of lithium is at its highest since August 2018 and the trend continues to climb. What to expect in the near future? Well, the definitive feasibility study on the Zulu deposit has commenced following the issuance of the exclusive prospecting order, which has an estimated completion time of 14 months. The ever-increasing demand for electric vehicles will increase the demand for lithium, 
a resource that Premier African Minerals Limited is focused on extracting and developing the lithium projects is essential. With this being said, we hope to see further exploration and potentially new sites being evaluated. This is likely to also contain gold extraction as the EPO issued contains six historic gold mines. The RNS dated the 18th of March 2021 also suggests that an update regarding fundraising is expected by the end of March 2021. Covering Rambler Metals and Mining PLC rather quickly, Rambler Metals and Mining have been pumping out water from the lower sections of the mine that were not maintained through the reduced production period of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The dewatering required an upgraded mine pumping system which was progressively deployed after financing was completed in December 2020. Rambler was also undertaking remedial work and catch-up maintenance requirements to bring the mining production and development fleet and process plant back into its proper condition. Coming up with Rambler Metals and Mining. Completion of the pumping and associated rehabilitation was expected by the end of February 2021, with access being achieved to develop the high-grade resources present in those areas. We have not yet received confirmation that the pumping has been completed. We are also waiting for confirmation of the purchase of the 2,200 tonnes per day dog pond plant and its dismantling and relocation to the Ming mine site, beginning in Q3 2021. We await updates regarding the infill diamond drilling that was set to recommence in the Ming mine with mobilisation at the end of January. We also await an update regarding the completion of the sale of the Nugget Pond Gold Plant into Maritime Resources Corporation. Finally, the objective for the final quarter of this year is to fully utilise the 1,350 tonnes per day mill capacity to process around 115,000 tonnes of runoff mine or at the 2% copper grade. Moving on to Thor Mining PLC. Thor Mining commenced trading of its ordinary shares on the OTCQB market in the United States under the ticket code THORF on the 17th of March 2021. Thor Mining have published a minor error in the half year report on the 15th of March 2021 when discussing the uranium and vanadium updates. Although the company has completed the acquisition of the American Vanadium PTY Limited, this was published on the 9th of September 2020 and not in September 2021 as the RNS claims. Let's look into Thor Mining's US Uranium and Vanadium project update in greater detail. Three priority targets have been identified, Section 23, Groundhog and Rimrock for drilling at the 100% owned Wedding Belt and Radium Mountain project in southwest Colorado. Section 23 does not appear to have been drilled previously. The saltwash type sandstone hosted mineralization within the high grade uranium vanadium Uravan mineral belt. Field sampling conducted by Thor returned assay results of high grade uranium up to 1.25%. U308 and vanadium up to 3.47 V205 as announced on the 21st of July 2020. The uranium vanadium mining jurisdiction is within close proximity to well developed infrastructure, and the shallow depth of prospective uranium vanadium fluvial sandstone hosted uranium is conductive to testing with low cost reverse circulation drilling. Thor Mining has a long list of upcoming events, but here is a summary of the major events we expect good news from. The Orford East drilling program is scheduled for Q2 2021 with the objective of commencing technical feasibility of low cost in situ recovery production. Stream sediment and soil rock sampling followed by maiden drilling program at Ragged Range is due to commence at Q2 2021. An initial drill program on several of the Colorado claims is expected to commence in May 
whilst discussions with potential investors and government agencies with mandates to fund critical minerals projects developments are ongoing in regards to the tungsten and molybdenum projects. The Kapunda 2021 field program commencing Q2 2021 is primarily focused on the site environment exhibient recovery trials. This work is aimed to be the final technical feasibility demonstration of the ISR technology at Kapunda for copper and gold recovery prior to commencement of the commercial feasibility study processes. And here is a quick recap on what in situ recovery process is from a previous video. So what is in situ recovery mining? In situ recovery is a non-invasive mining method using delivery wells. These are drilled into an ore body through which a diluted sulfuric acid solution is pumped to dissolve the target minerals or metals. In this instance, our target minerals are copper and gold. The solution moves through the rock in a controlled manner to the drilled recovery wells where it is then pumped back to the surface for processing. The drilling of the wells is key to ensure that solutions can be pumped back to the surface to be processed rather than being pumped outside of the mining area. In situ recovery is by far cheaper than conventional mining methods as it does not require digging down to the ore body for extraction. Subscribe to the Bull and Bear Invest channel today and stay informed with weekly watch list reviews, in-depth research and understanding the stock market videos with more content being uploaded each week.